Good morning, and today we're going to do a model on smoke. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is isolate the model from the background. So I'm going to select the selection tool. And at the top here, we have select subject. I'm just going to click that and let Photoshop select. There you go. And that's quite good. So we'll go to select, modify, and feather. And we'll feather by one pixel. Then we'll press Ctrl G and that will put that onto our own layer. Over here, there is the turn that off. That's what we've got. Now we can position our way around that. So I'll get the move tool. And the first thing I'll do is I'll right hand click and I'll flip horizontal because I want to look on the other way. And she needs to be made. Fairly small, and I think now I'm looking straight ahead. Something like that. Yep, that looks okay. Alright, just to help out, um, I'll put a layer underneath and I'll fill it with weight just so we can see what we're doing. So I'll use a bucket fill. Here you go. And we've got it here. Now I'm going to need another two copies of the model. So if I control J and control J again, we now have three copies. One, two, three. The bottom one again is just so we can see what we're doing. The top one I'm turning off for now, and the middle one I'm going to put an inverted layer mask, which is a black layer mask. So if I select it, put my finger on Alt, and hit Layer Mask, you see we get a black layer mask. So nothing of that layer is shown. If I turn that off, see nothing there, even though it's turned on. We're looking at this layer. We're actually going to be working on this layer on the mask. So the first thing we need to do is go get some brushes. And if I come down here, I find smoke brushes. And there's a load of smoke brushes on here. Um, I'm not going to mess around with them. I'll just pick. Oh, there you go. Nice big smoke brush. I'll make sure it's on white because we're working on a black layer. So we want a white brush. What I'm going to do is make it fairly small. And I'm just going to stomp it there. And you see it's stumped on there, but we can't see it because we've got the slip. Mm -hmm. Because the slip is on, so it's shown all the way through. Alright, I'm going to go get a different one. Probably make that a bit small as well. Stop a bit there, and then it's a bit over here. So we'll go see what we've got now. We're going to turn this bottom head off. Right. See what we're getting? We're just getting where the head is. So the bottom part needs a bit of work. So I'm going to find another brush. Oof, that's so pretty. So I'm going to stamp this bit here. And that is, we're going to use this bit here. That must have increased it quite a bit, so I will turn that off and, yeah, now we've got the model's face. You can see what we've got. Right. So we may as well start on the top model's head. So I'm going to turn it on. And before we do anything, I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to go to filler, liquify. That's because I'm in the wrong layer. Get in the layer we're going to work on, which is the top layer. Fill that, liquify. 
And there she is there. Now, the bit I don't want to move is the front of her face because I've just been working on that and got that right. So, if you go down the list here, it tells you what everything is, then you come across Freeze Mask. You click that, you'll get a brush. And what you do there is, you just simply paint over the bits that you want to freeze in place to not be affected by what we're about to do. So, there you go. We've froze that bit. Then if I go back to the top tool, the forward warp tool, this will allow us to liquefy everything else. So, if I just go and pick something up here and just drag it. Let's go and drag it around. Ooh, I just did that here and put a bit like Mr. Spock now. Roll this out. There you go. And just say OK. Right. We got strange head we've got now. Now we're going to put a layer mask on that, an inverted one again. So put your finger on Alt, click the layer mask, and there it is gone. So now we're going to pick the brushes for the smoke. <coughs> now I'm just going to randomly pick some. I'm going to start from the bottom again. Um, a lot of time can be taken on whether the particular smoke that you want. It's all really trial and error. You'll have to mess around with them. I'm not doing that. I'm just showing you the technique. So I'm just going to use whatever's at hand. So I'm going to take this one first. And it wants to be at an angle. So I want it at an angle like that. And this is this thing here is what changes the angle. You just grab the little point and move it around which way you want it. So if I come here like this, click. There you go. Smoke. Right, we'll get a different brush. That long one, yeah, that's a long one as well. So that wants to go clockwise about 90 degrees. So clockwise about 90 degrees. And we'll sort of add another see. A little touch more. Yep, yeah, that's better. We can even increase the size of that. Ah, there you go. And find another longish one. That's not a longish one, is it? No, that's not. That looks like a longish one. Yep. And that wants to go anti clockwise over 90 degrees. Not too much. But no more. This is what I mean about it taking time. You pick in the, the right brush to, to look right in that place. And just put that one on there. And there you go. Now I think I'll get rid of these brushes because of the noise and wind. Let's get the normal soft one back. Yeah. And what we're going to do, we're going to turn our black and white. So don't do add a layer mask or adjustment mask and black and white. And you can adjust these just to darken it a bit, something like that. Now we'll see what we've got. I'm going to go back to the second head. And I'm going to go into the layer mask of it. I've got a white brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the front of my face back on. Now how much you bring that on is up to you. I would suggest that you bring an eye, you know, because that's obviously your focal point. Maybe something like that. And we're going to introduce a bit of colour since I've changed it to black and white. 
So I'm going to put a new layer mask on the top. A new layer on the top, sorry. And I'm going to go get the foreground color. I'm going to get a light brown. It's not like that. I'm going to get the background color. Make it a dark brown. Then I'm going to get the gradient tool. In this case, it's actually head underneath the the bullet tool, so it'll be right hand click. You can get the gradient tool. Make sure it's on light to dark, and we don't want it on linear, which is the first one. We want it on radial, which is the second one. So we'll click the second one. Then you can just go to the middle of the screen, click, and drag out the color. And there you go. Except of course, we'll just go out over everything we've done. So we'll fix that by changing the blending mode. And we'll change that to multiply. Now that's not quite the colour I want. So I'm going to come down to the adjustment layer again, add an adjustment layer, and I'm going to put hue and saturation on. I'm going to attach it to the gradient layer. I alt click in between them. And then I can just turn the saturation down to what I want. It should be something like that. And this is where you do your adjustments. So you can go into the black and white and we can make the daughter. Something like that. And to finish it off, I would put the levels on the top and Just went in the wrong place. It was on the top. Just bring the black. And the white there. And there you go. You have a model turn smoke. That's a little bit too bright though. It's a little bit too dark. And yeah, just turn the mid tones down a bit. And there you go. Now, as I'm saying, most of your time will be taking up selecting the brush. You'll be putting it on, taking it off, <laughs> until you get it right. Um, the original image and a written tutorial. Uh, with in the written tutorial, there's a link to the brush brushes that you use. It's all on the South Shields Digital Group website. Um, there's a link to that in my header or in the description of this tutorial. Thanks for listening.